couple of pros. Have <laughs> 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 been doing this? <laughs> <laughs> if only I had a memory. Yeah. If only I had a brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and today I'm I feel lucky to have uh, old dog, Hi new everybody. tricks from uh, uh, YouTube, and uh, it's an honor to have you, Paul. It's an honor to be here, Dan. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's great to have you here. Um, so, Paul, I, I've watched your channel, you know, over the years, and really I'm enjoyed sorry. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So there's three things that you've done really well coming to the Philippines that I want to ask you about, so okay. people can learn. Okay. You retired early at 62. Right. Right? And so when people are doing that analysis, they're thinking, should I wait till I'm 65, 62, right. or whatever? And you were motivated. What made you say, you know, screw it? I'm leaving the US. I'm headed to the Philippines. What was that sure. thinking you did? It's kind of a multifaceted answer. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, I was burnt out on right. working. Right. So that, you know, without elaborating on that, I was more than done. Right. And I had been to Southeast Asia. In the past, I knew in 2005 when I first visited Thailand and then revisited in 2009 that this was going to be my destination. Not necessarily Thailand, not necessarily the Philippines, but somewhere in an Asian country. Right. I just fell in love with the people, the food, the vibe, the, the whole enchilada. Right. So that was always in the back of my hard drive right. that this was going to be my place. <clears throat> As time grew nearer to my retirement age, I started to do the usual stuff that most people do. I started to Google cheapest places to retire, yeah, yeah. top 10 places to retire, right. this, that, and the other. Yeah. And I came up with all kinds of different answers, but primarily the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, those all three came up a lot, right. along with other places as well. But your, your question was, why did I pull the trigger early? Yeah. Well, um, all my life, I have listened to the conventional wisdom <laughs> of what we've been programmed to listen to. Yeah. You know, like eat Kellogg sugar frosted flakes as a kid. That's a good thing to go to school on. Tony the you know, Tiger. Yeah. You know, some, some sugar and some carbs. That's good to throw into a kid. By the time he gets to second period, he's like <laughs> you know, yeah. in a diabetic coma. Right. And so, yeah, buy real estate invest in a 401k, right. do all these things. Yeah. And really, I thought that the that time had proven all of those things to be true. Right. Because real estate had always appreciated yeah. at a slow rate, one, yeah. two percent. Yeah. Uh, 401ks were a great place to park your money. Yeah. They were pretty much bulletproof. All this stuff I was thinking was safe. Right. And when the crash came... When two, the real 2008? Yeah. Okay. When that puppy came, yeah. everything that I had put my money into and invested into was real estate, 401ks, and everything that I had accumulated over my 35 years of working yeah. disappeared in about 11 months. Poof. Boom. Yeah. History. And I started. I know the story. I you know what, man? Yeah. Uh, I said, I just don't believe the conventional wisdom anymore. <laughs> These people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they're just, we're all just buying into it. Yeah. And so far their track record was great. Yeah. But the minute that happened, right. and I stood around and I said, man, I was so close, and yet yeah. I'm back to ground zero here. Yeah, yeah. What do I do? Yeah. And so the myth of waiting until you're 65 or 70 was also being perpetuated right. that boy if you wait you know you're going to get more the money check will be higher. your check's going to be higher yeah. your check's going to be higher yeah. so <clears throat> what i did was i said okay 62 i'm going to have the opportunity to retire right 65 always seemed like the sweet spot for social security right. you wait till then you get your full benefits and then after that it's a bonus right so i googled something and i googled the average lifespan of an American male. Right. And it came back to 77. Yeah. And I said, huh, so if I retire at 65, which is what the conventional wisdom is telling me That's to right. do, yeah. then I'm going to have 12 years left. 12 years. And how many of those are going to be productive and good? Right. I mean, at the end. You might yeah. be drooling. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it may be, you know, bedridden with bed sores yeah. in a home somewhere yeah, right. and uh, that's not how 
I want to live my life. Yeah, yeah. So I also did some math and I said, okay, I'm going to use the number of $2,000 just to make life simple. Right. My real check at the time was like 1700 bucks. But I like simple. Okay. So yeah. what I did was I said, all right, if I retire at, I, if I retire at 62 yep. and how much money will I receive in a year if I get two grand a month? Well, that's twenty-four thousand dollars. Right. I also found out that if I waited till I was sixty-three, right, they would pay me an additional hundred and twenty dollars per month. Per month. Per month. I mean, I'm sorry, per year. Per year. It was ten dollars per month that my my benefit went up. Oh. So I took that number of hundred and twenty dollars right. for a year. Right. And I looked at that 24K, and right. now I dialed it back in my head to 20K because right. I wasn't really getting 2,000. And I said, how many months would I have to work or, or collect the benefit of the extra $120 to make up for the 20 grand that I didn't get? Right, right. And I could also collect that money, and I could continue to work until I earned seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars, whatever the cutoff was. Yeah, they allow you to make so yeah. much. Yeah. So while I'm working, now I'm getting this this additional seven. In my case, seventeen hundred dollars a month, whether I want it or not. Right. That's just like a big raise. Yeah. And so that's what I did. You're um, banking that money, right? I was banking that money, and so I pulled the trigger at sixty-two, because here was my philosophy. What if I die at the age of 66? Right. <laughs> and I waited till 65. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much am I really going to get? <laughs> right, right. And how much of that am I going to get to enjoy? Yeah. And where is it going to go? Right. So just the math just wasn't working for me. Yeah. And I also realized that by moving overseas, there was going to be much less stress, much less pressure right. for rent, for food, for transportation. Yep. I had done that research also. I had watched many channels like yours, Rike, these other guys that were running around at the time. Yeah. And everybody seemed to have a budget back in 2012, 13, when I was researching it, of about a thousand bucks a month. That right. was the magic number. Yeah, yeah. By the time I got to retirement, it was about fifteen hundred bucks a month for yeah. me to budget per month. Right. And my check, like I said back then, was about seventeen and change. Right. Today it's at twenty three hundred, and it's gone up with all the cola stuff. And here I am, six years later, and every month I've managed to save money. Right. I've had no stress in my life yeah. because most stress is brought on by financial concerns. Exactly. Granted, we have medical issues that like chronic pain is brutal. Right. I've experienced that. Yeah. I totally relate and I totally empathize with guys that are going through that or women. Um, there's some things you just can't avoid. But what I could avoid was financial stress. Yeah. So I cleared off my debt with all that extra money. Credit cards were paid. I came over here with zero balance I had, as far as debt. Right. I had money saved, I had money in my pocket, I landed, I made my mistakes the first three months, I burned through more cash than I should have, but that was part of the learning curve. Right, right. And it didn't devastate me. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like it wiped me out. Right. It was maybe 20% more than if I had it to do all over again today, knowing what I know, yeah. I could have avoided, but oh well, big deal. Yeah. You know. So that's, that's to answer your question, that's why I retired at the age of 62. Yeah, so it was... Uh, it sounds like it was a analytical decision. Yeah. But also, as you said, you were burnt out. That was done. A, done. Yeah. It wasn't worth it to me. Um, I lived before the crash. I lived in the big house, you know, the McMansion kind of thing, and the right. cars and all this stuff. Yeah. And I spent a lot of time alone because I had divorced. My kids had grown up, and it was just me sitting in this big box, and it was just a box. That's all a house is. Yeah. You know, when you're by yourself, yeah. you're in a box. It could be a little box or a big box. And actually, the big box will make you feel lonelier than if you're in a little one. And it's harder to clean. It's more to maintain. It's more to insure. It's everything. Utilities. It's everything. It's just, and I looked around, and as I got older, I think we acquire a wisdom, whether we want to or not. And our priorities shift. 
Yeah. What was important to me when I was 30 years old right. has almost no importance to me at all at the age of yeah. 60. Or, well, actually, I'm 68, but in my 60s. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's done a 180. And so when I was 30, oh man, I had to have the latest TV. Yeah. I had to have the coolest car. Yeah. I had to have that nice suit. The kids had to have this. The wife had to have that. It was so important, these material objects. Right. And now, if you look at what was so important in the year 2000, and here we are 23 years later, <laughs> well, they're all rusted. Yeah. They're all deteriorated. Yeah. They're at the junkyard right yeah, now, or right. at that's some right. garage sale, if that. Right. And they just, they have their expiration date to them. And so things and stuff, meaningless, yeah. really is. Unless it's utilitarian. I need to have a refrigerator. I need to have a sofa to sit on. I need a bed to sleep on. Right. In my case, I need an air conditioner. So right. therefore, I pay for <laughs> electric. But that's me. Yeah. Those are my creature comforts. Yeah. And you know what? As I sit in my little house over here in sleepy little Dumaguete, paying my $360 a month rent, I'm just as comfortable on the couch. I see the exact same show on TV. Mm. I sleep just as soundly on mm. the little bed that I've got mm. as I did when I was paying 4000 a month for the same privilege. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just didn't make any sense. Why am I going to work, killing myself yeah. for that guy, right. who's a nice guy, he pays me every month, yeah. uh, and there's some bennies with, with the job and all that, but I'm really just making him rich but worse is I'm not living a life. Yeah, yeah. I'm just working. Working. I'm working just showing work. up every yeah. day and going through the routine. By the time I get done, I'm so tired, I don't want to do anything else. Yeah, yeah. Now when I wake up in the morning, the day is mine. And I can choose to have a good day or a bad day. Yeah. It's really up to me. Yeah, it's a big deal getting that monkey <coughs> off your back. Oh, and my the, God. All those monthly payments and all, oh. the, all the debt and Insurance, everything. Insurance, everything you own is gonna be maintained, insured, clean, yeah. um, looked after, worried about. Yeah. You know, you get that new car and you're worried about that first <laughs> the dent. The first crash. <laughs> you know, the first time a shopping cart hits it. It's like, <laughs> 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 right now, it's like, to me, it's a big relief. You know, oh, we yeah. got that out of the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't have to sit there and worry about the car anymore. It's already screwed up. Yeah. So, so Paul, we, um, you know, you don't have to watch too many YouTube videos before you'll find someone that had this dream of, of going overseas, mm. living on whatever, a thousand, yeah. fifteen hundred, two thousand a month. And and they'll be telling a story about they came over with the dream and they ended up uh, with a broken heart and empty oh, pockets. Yeah. So what what were some of the techniques you used in order to make sure that you stayed within budget and that you uh, okay. that, that you didn't go down that road? I say the smartest thing I ever did before I left the house or left America was I had a real conversation with myself. And I said, you know what, I need to, <laughs> I've watched the videos of just that. Yeah. The guy got scammed or yeah. robbed or whatever, yeah. failed. Yeah. And I said, here's the dealio, Paul. <laughs> the Bible's got 10 commandments. Well, I don't have that many, but I'm gonna make two or three. And the primary one was never buy anything that I cannot afford to walk away from. In other words, never get invested in yet another thing that I had to concern myself with. Right. So if I buy a scooter, or if I buy a sofa, or if I buy a refrigerator, which I think are all necessary items, yeah. make sure that it's something that I can walk away. If there's an earthquake tomorrow, we gotta get out of the Philippines and, and head to safer grounds. Yeah, yeah. Can I afford to walk away from that thing and just leave it behind? Yeah. And every time I've purchased something, big or small, the answer has been yes. Right. I had that philosophy on day one, and I have that same philosophy today. Right. I just had a cup of coffee. I wouldn't have bought it if I couldn't have afforded it yeah, yeah. or I walked away from it and <laughs> not drank it. <laughs> um, as far as, as, far as uh, what was the other part of the question? I'm sorry. Just do you keep some, do you watch how much is going out oh, per yeah, month? Yeah, or yeah. How do you, how yeah. do you manage that so you don't wake up at the end of the month yeah. and go, oh, I spent next yeah, month's Yeah, commandment number two okay. was stay under budget. 
For the first time in my life, I knew exactly what was coming in. I'd always worked on commission. Right. So right. some months you'd be big, some months would be right. naked, right. you know, in some yeah. place in, in between. Yeah. So of course you took the good months and you put some aside for the bad months. And that was how I lived my life, which was very stressful because two bad months in a row made for a real weird third month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were really pressing. <laughs> and so I actually felt really comfortable making the smallest amount of money I've ever earned, other than when I was maybe 20, right, you know, right. working for minimum wage, right. $3 an hour, whatever it was. Yeah. But I get this little pension check, Social Security check every month, and I've never felt more secure. Because over here, I knew it before I got here, I proved it once I arrived, I can have an overhead, a fixed static overhead of $600 a month. That's rent, that's electricity, right. that's petrol, that's right. my phone, and I don't have any credit card debt, I don't have any loans, I, yeah. don't, I pay cash for everything. Right. So I got 600 going out every month, and the rest is up to me. Yeah. So and initially it was $1,700. I said, I'm gonna save something every month. It's gonna be 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. A couple of times I actually saved almost a thousand bucks or I lived on a thousand bucks to right. save the 700 at right, the time. Yeah, right. I did those experiments and I was able to pull it off. Yeah. And so since I have been here, I have always saved money. I've always been positive. There's not one month that I've gone over budget. That's great. And that is almost became a game. You know what I mean? It yeah, was like, yeah. it was like, this is so cool because <laughs> you know, in America, I would look at my checkbook and I'd watch it. It would be had this big number, and it would go down to like this little number. <laughs> I'd be mean, like, "Oh man!" And now I pull up my balance in my bank, and every month it just goes up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's not a lot, but it's <laughs> still in the right direction. Exactly. And it's like this is cool. And yeah. over six years, it turns into a halfway significant number. Yeah. It's and a, it's just a, a feeling of accomplishment. Oh, it's not like I need to be rich or I need to have a lot of dough or right. I got a, any of that, but I feel very comfortable that if I had an emergency, yeah. if I had to have surgery or if I had to fly to America, I could pull it off and I wouldn't have to be begging on somebody right, or right. wishing I had done it different. It yeah. was, it's there. Exactly. So those are the two things that I, I would call it I would call it structure, and I would call it discipline. I made a plan, and I stuck to the plan. Right. And I had the discipline to stay with the plan. Great. And so, I would say that was, if you're an undisciplined type of person, um, you, that's where I think guys get in trouble. Yeah. You know, they're impulse, emotional. That's right. Uh, I call it kid in a candy store. When they first yeah. come over here, everything's cheap. Yep. They just start rolling, buying drinks for friends. Uh -huh out with a different girl every night uh -huh. or boy, whatever the thing is, and uh -huh. they run out of money. Um, that's true. So uh, that's great. Which what I, I found was good for me was if I took my money and I set aside every month, I still, I just did it. Yeah. Um, I set aside the rent, I set aside this, yeah. I set aside that. Yeah. And whatever my static bills are, uh, those are in an envelope and they're gone, they're yeah. forgotten. I can't touch that, yeah. it's off the hook. Right. The rest is there. Right. And what I always do every month is I take what I've got left and I divide it by either 28 or 35 because that's when I get my check. I either get my check every four weeks or right. every five weeks. It okay. depends on how I get it on the second Wednesday of every month. <laughs> sometimes it's 28 days, oh. sometimes it's 35 days. Oh, I see. So I can take this 50,000 or pick a number and let's say 30, 35,000 pesos that Peso. I've got left over. Yeah, yeah. Well, on a five weeker, as I call it, I got a thousand pesos a day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. On a 28. That's day. a perfect way to do it. Yeah. Without a lot of thought. No. Just it's, yeah, because a guy like me, <laughs> thinking's not exactly my strong point. <laughs> no, that's a, so, full, that's a foolproof way to do it. So I know that if yeah. I went out today and I spent three grand, ooh, I'm two days short. Yeah. So maybe I need to just kill it at the house for a day. Yeah, dial it back. And I'll just let's just let's just down to five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Let's just keep it down to nothing. Let's just stay home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of my most fulfilling days are the ones where I don't do anything. Oh. I just stay those home. Are the best days. You know what I mean, man? <laughs> it's raining outside or it's really hot outside yeah. or 
maybe you got the sniffles or you got a little fever and turn you feel on a little Netflix. funky. Yeah, you just turn on the TV, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. torment the wife. <laughs> <laughs> with, your, with your choice of movie or whatever. That brings up the next question. So yeah. you've been very successful. Uh, you found a beautiful woman over here. Yeah. You're just recently married. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. Um, and so um, when you first came over here, you were single. Yep. Um, and, and so before you found Mrs. Wright, mm -hmm. baby May, of mm -hmm. course, your wife, um, were there some Mrs. Wrongs along the way or Miss Wrongs along the way? And, and what were the red flags for you? Okay, yeah. That's Because this is another place you're, you're a winner. So people yeah. need to know this. Again, I think that um, a lot of it was mindset. Remember the commandments? Yeah. Um, no matter what people say or think or want, that's fine. My driver over here was what we just talked about. I wanted economic freedom. Right, I did right. not want the stress. Yeah. As far as romance or women, yeah, I'm a red-blooded male. However, I appreciate a beautiful woman as much as the next guy right. or gal, whatever yeah. your bent is. Yeah. Um, however, I, was, I had gone through, without a lot of details, because I don't want to disrespect anybody, some pretty painful relationships that, were, that left some pretty deep cuts, and they stayed with me. And my last year or two or more even in America, I lived alone. And I was totally cool. Right. I was happy with myself. Right. I enjoy my own company. Right. I can sit in a room. I don't have to have somebody next to me. Right. I don't feel lonely. Yeah. And so I would rather, <laughs> bottom line is, I'd rather be alone than with somebody I don't get along with yeah. and try to make it work. Yeah. So I was totally chill with being by myself. I, in fact, I enjoyed it. I woke up when I wanted to. I didn't answer to anybody. I, if I was hungry, I ate. If I was tired, I would sleep. Right. If I wanted to go play golf, I went and played golf. Yeah. I didn't have to check in or call or text or pick up a quart of milk on the way home. None of that was you know, on the radar anymore. Yeah. And I enjoyed that freedom. And so when I came over here, I thought, I want to keep that freedom. I'm not going to hook up with anybody or get involved. Right, I don't right. want, you know, uh, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to be checking in and do this and that. Right. right. And so I came over here with kind of a hardened heart when it came to right, right. a relationship. Yeah. And so <clears throat> it took about three months for that to wear off. <laughs> 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 because the women in here were so friendly and so gentle yeah. and so beautiful yeah. and just so different than what I was accustomed to. They weren't your heart out. Uh, yeah, man, I didn't feel like I was competing <laughs> with them. Or, but they were trying to one-up me with their job or impress yeah. me with their stuff or yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of wazoo jazz. Yeah. And so I was actually introduced to a lady by my neighbor. Right. And I said, I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll meet her. And so she came over. I didn't know she came all the way from Mindanao. She took all this a boat and a ferry and everything else. Right. And basically, they were setting me up <clears throat> for their friend. And they knew all along, it was a little bit of conspiracy, that they were <laughs> under the impression that I was the millionaire foreigner. <laughs> and they were going to hook their friend up with him. So you were the mark. <laughs> I was the mark. Yeah, that's right. And without getting into all the gory details, there really weren't a lot of gory details. It's just that it took me two or three months to, for me to realize that I would give her a stipend so that she had some money in her pocket, sure. not an allowance, nothing like that. It was just, here's some money. I'm right. going to give you this every week, about 30, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. That way, if you're not with me and you want to buy a Coke or you're out with the girls and you want to buy a pair of shorts, you can. Right. And I know you don't have an income. Yeah. I'm paying the rent, I'm paying the food, I'm paying this, I'm paying that. Right. And so you're covered there. These are for incidentals. Yeah. And that money just was like a black hole. And every month she wanted more and more and more. We lasted about two and a half months. And I said, you know what? We had the talk two times already. We were halfway through the month on the third month. And we were having the other talk. And she just looked at me with like a vacancy sign was on when I was trying to tell her, that, you know, we don't just have money to burn. And, uh, I'm a foreigner. I'm not a foreigner. Okay, you know, get that through to your head. I'm not this guy with the car and the house and you're, you're you know not, the helicopter pad. That ain't me. You're a foreigner, I, not a foreigner. Yeah, yeah, my check is poquito. What? I don't know. How do I get this through to you? And so it just wasn't working. Yeah. And I said, you know what? We're gonna go down together 
and I don't want to go to the bottom with you. Yeah, yeah. All right? right. I want to go to the top with somebody. I don't want to go to the bottom with Right, her. right. And I said, we, we're just going to have to call it a day. I'm sorry. And so I gave her, you know, a little bit of money and said, there you go. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Yeah. And so uh, that's a red flag we hear about all the time online. It's uh, money pits. Uh, yeah. Work. And so um, how long were you... Uh, how did you meet Baby May? What happened? Uh, like? Okay. Well, I was I rem after that little incident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Paul, lesson learned. Let's go back to square one where we <laughs> got off the plane, and I just remained single for two years. Oh. And so I wow. would I would date an occasional person here and there. Okay. And yeah. um, I just they were pretty. They were young. They were this. They were that. And I just didn't connect with them. Right, right. And a lot of it was because of the age group. It right. was like they were, the girls were in their mid-20s or whatnot. Right. And I'm in my 60s. And I just couldn't relate to them. They couldn't relate to me. Right, right. And a beautiful woman is a beautiful woman. Right. But that's, that doesn't mean that it's going to work. Right. And you're, that you're going to make it work because you want to have this trophy on your arm. Exactly. And it gets to the, I said to myself, do I see myself with this person in a year or three years or five years? Yeah. And so we would just be out to lunch uh, or we would just be out to dinner yeah. or we would just be having a coffee or a beer or whatever her thing was. Right. And we'd be talking or not talking in many yeah. cases. And I would <laughs> say, no, the answer is no. Yeah. And whenever I met them or they were introduced or we got together in any way, shape or form, right. they would always say, are you looking for a girlfriend? And I would say, nope, I'm not. I yeah, was yeah. always honest, because yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't, and I was always truthful. And I said, now you know. And the funny thing is, is that that almost had the reverse effect. It was almost like a challenge. Yeah. Like, oh, this guy's different. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, he's not feeding me the same line that the other guy did. Right. And it was almost... And it was real. It wasn't like a takeaway. That you yeah, were it was. It was the it real was deal. The real deal. I, yeah. I watch guys that really make me ashamed because they say, "Oh, yeah, I'm gonna. I love you, and I'm gonna do this for you, and I'm gonna do that for you, and you want a baby? I'll give you one, and we'll get married one day, and we'll go." Now, why are you doing that? Yeah. Why? Why don't you just be honest with her? And yeah. you're doing more damage than good here, pal. Sure. That's not a good way to live. Sure. Just tell the truth. Because when you lie, now you've got to come up with 15 different stories to back up that lie. Yeah. All right, we've all lied. We've all done it. Yeah. And it's not a good way to start. And yeah. it's certainly not a good way to live. So there is such a thing as a white lie, you know. Yeah. Like, do these jeans make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Those are nice looking jeans. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, just I was just honest with people. And then how did I meet Baby May? I was the third wheel on a dinner date. My right. friend and his girlfriend were having dinner. They invited me to come along. Yeah. So I joined them for dinner and the date. I was meeting her for the first time, my friend's girlfriend at the time. And of course, her first question is, are you single? And I said, yes. <laughs> and then the Filipinas, which are just born again romantics, <laughs> from the tip of their toes to the totally. top of their head, man, totally. it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And she's, well, why are you single? I said, well, I haven't met anybody I liked yet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, that's, that's the truth. And she said, well, I know somebody that I think you would like. And that turned out to be Baby Mike. Oh. So we were introduced on a blind date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, the, a lot of people meet online or whatever, and you met through mm -hmm. friends. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. A lot of that happens, I've noticed. Uh, if I'm not with Chung and I'm walking around in a market or something, people are, are you single? Are you single? Uh -huh. I can see it's like the, the, the Philippine uh, mantra, of, you know, single Honest, men need to be... May asks it when yeah. she meets one of my friends. Yeah. She goes, are you single? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's her first question. <laughs> you know, you don't have a girlfriend? Why not? <laughs> Exactly. Again, a born again romantic. They just <laughs> love love. They yeah. just love romance. <laughs> they just don't think anybody should be alone. Everybody should be a couple and happy. Right. So, so, so once you met uh, Baby May, was yeah. it? Um, 
Was it love at first sight, or was it? Did you have to go through some bumpy roads before you got to Easy Street with her? It was yes and no. It was yeah. love at first sight, yeah, because I just found her to be so beautiful, and um, just something about her look just hit my eye, and I realized it. This is something I never told you before, but there was a woman that lived in my apartment complex, right. and she was a very, and still is, a very famous Instagram model. Okay. And she, boy, she's had this augmentation and this done and that done, right. and she has just got this physique that is just, you know, just been sculpted, and this face and all this and that. And I kid you not, <clears throat> She was standing, they were taking a selfie together, May and this Instagram model. And I was looking at both of them, and my eye just kept going to May. Mm. I said, there's the beautiful woman yeah, yeah. right there, uh -huh. with the little gap in her teeth, right. you know? Mm. And, and the little, little mark right here. Yeah. I call them perfect imperfections. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you have these perfect imperfections. <laughs> You're not perfect, but to me, they just make you more adorable. Yeah. It's hard for me to, to, to verbalize. No, I but the girl mean. that's got nothing wrong with her and everything's flawless yeah. and everything's just, just right and right where it should be. <laughs> it almost looks like a Barbie doll. It doesn't look real, you know? Oh, yeah. Where with May, it always did. So yeah, there was that attraction, but we had our bumpy times. There was a tough time communicating with May. Um, she came from the province. She hadn't dated foreigners. She hadn't dated much at all, period. She had primarily just worked the majority of her childhood in Manila as a housekeeper, supported her family for 16, 17 years, sent every check that she, or paycheck that she got, or cash rather, right. to home, yeah. kept a little bit for herself for her day, one day off, right. and on her one day off, she'd maybe go out and buy a Coke, or she'd buy herself some little trinket you know, for 15 or 20 pesos, and that yeah. was it. She did that for years, and um, she was the breadwinner for the family. Wow. And so, when her and I got together, um, she did not have a lot of life experience, <laughs> and that was a little tough for me to get used to. Right. And in the beginning, I was with her, and I said, you know what, I just don't think this is working. And she said, okay. And away she went. And she was gone for about a month. And you know what? I couldn't get her out of my head. And then one day, out of the blue, she just called me. And she said, you know, I was thinking about you. And uh, uh, maybe we could get together. I said, yeah, why not? And so, come on over. Come hang out. And we hung out again. And believe it or not, after about two weeks, I said, eh, it's just doesn't, you know, I dig you, but we're not connecting in some way, shape, or form. Right, right. She spent another little bit of time apart. She was now in Dumaguete because she was working with her sister, so she was no longer in Chaton. And she was around and available. And then we got back together on a third time. And I don't know if she changed or if I changed or if we both changed, but all of that seemed to dissipate and go away. Hmm. And the communication seemed to improve a lot. Right. And she was very suspect at first, and this and that and the other, and that dissipated. I think she talked to her sisters. She'd never been with a guy like me before, a foreigner, right. an older guy. Right. You know, um, the, like I said, they all think we're millionaires, but that was never her thing. She just said that that she she loved me for me, and she never asked me for any money or any of that kind of stuff. And she just had these qualities, these morals, these characteristics that I was really in tune with. I go back to my Instagram model. You know, I don't only see her physically that way, but I also see the inside of her that way. Yeah, yeah. I see her as just being head and shoulders above anybody else that I ever encountered right, right. on all kinds of levels. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, uh, that's a great, having that perception, it's clear why you're... Well, I gave it two years of being single too. Yeah, yeah. And then I gave it about six months of of yeah. stop on again, off again, and then it was another several months before she cohabitated with me. Yeah, so we took our time. We slowed yeah. down. We did not rush in, you know. Yeah, there's. I think in another conversation we had, you talked about how some people just come over with the desperation. They just come over to meet someone right away, and yeah. they need someone with them all the time. I think it's yeah. also the fact that you, you know, you were just centered in yourself, 
and you took yeah. the time to really look at what, what you wanted in your life. So, Paul, you have a, a very successful YouTube channel, and it's fun to watch. Um, the, you do, it seems like you do two kinds of things. You, you do what I call a monologue, where you just start talking, you turn on the camera and yeah. start talking, and you do <laughs> interviews. I, I want to talk first about just about the, um, when you do these monologues. Yeah. Where do you get the inspiration for this? What, what is that mental process? Uh, the atmosphere. Okay. Is where it comes from. Right. It just comes into my head. <laughs> <laughs> is it Martians, you think? Or I don't know. Rain? <laughs> well, I have a lot of little friends that you can't see. <laughs> they give me ideas all the time. There's one right now. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> God, it you said you'd be quiet during I, the interview. I hate it when he does that. <laughs> no, but I'll be hanging out, and I just—I'm not really thinking about doing a video or anything like that. Yeah. And I'll listen to a song, and I'll put on something like Bob Dylan, right. and I've heard the song a thousand times, right, right. or an old Beatles song, or whatever I like. Yeah, yeah. Just whatever mood I'm in, Bonnie Raitt. Could yeah. be anything. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, I will hear a line or a lyric that I've heard a thousand times, but it takes on a new meaning to me. Right, right. Or someone in conversation will use use some sort of, um, they'll verbalize something. Right. And I'll say, say that again. And I'll, mm -hmm. Let me investigate that. Right. And that's not a word I normally use. And I'll get into the meaning of that word. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll associate it with maybe a person, a place, or a thing. And then in my own head, because when I was a kid, I always had this crazy imagination. Right. And I spent a lot of time alone when I was a kid. I was sick for a year, had to stay at home. So I had to entertain myself. And I think that's probably the genesis of it, is that my imagination is a little more active than most. Right. And I have this self-reflection thing that I like to do, a gut check, where can I be a better person? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? Right. I try to analyze each day. Yeah. And out of that somewhere, that soup, sometimes will come a video. And yeah. I'll say, you know what? I think that's an important topic to talk about. Yeah. And I think that those are some buzzwords that people will associate with. Yeah. And it sparks my imagination. Yeah. And I do stream of consciousness. I don't write anything down. Every blue moon I'll make a note if I'm talking about numbers or something. But for the most part, I just sit down and talk about what I've been thinking in my own head. Yeah. So if it's interesting to you. It's, it's fun. It's fun And to it's talk something, about. you know, that's how yeah. I, the whole genesis of the, of the channel was a Facebook video that I did for myself. The whole channel is not for me or you or anybody else. It's really for my grandkids. And it, um, what sold me on the idea, I had to be talked into doing the channel, was <laughs> it would be a legacy for when you're dead and gone. Your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids can wake up and say, why is my life not working? Why am I such a disturbed individual? Why can't I get successful in life? And then they look at my YouTube channel and go, that's the DNA I came from. No wonder I've got issues. Look at this idiot. <laughs> so it's a legacy. Yeah, it's my legacy. This is, I'm sorry for the you that is not born yet from my children. I just great grandpa wants to apologize that you got me in your chromosomes somewhere. Okay, I got that off my chest. Have a nice day. Oh. <laughs> So you also have great interviews on your channel. How, how do you decide who you want to interview and, and who you don't? Is there some thinking that goes into that? Or? Yeah, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. And over the years, even when I was, again, just, I didn't do YouTube for almost three years. I lived here for practically three years before the YouTube thing started. So all those three years, I met all kinds of interesting people. <laughs> and then when the YouTube dealio came along, I had quite a pool to choose from. <laughs> and I would say, hey, remember that story you told me about your girlfriend? Why do you say we put that on camera? And we would do that. And then I'll meet guys recently or currently. And some of those guys that I meet will tell me stories. They don't want to be on the channel. I go, yeah. okay, that's cool. And always have somebody on that wants to be on. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you ever try to force it, oh, it yeah, doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't work. It's, yeah. it's, it's no good. Yeah. Even though as badly as I would like to have them share, they're not comfortable. Right, but it, right. It's no good. No, it's no good. And so there's people that want to be able to tell their story. 
they're funny yeah. or they're tragic <laughs> or they're somewhere in between and sometimes it's great sometimes it's not so great but again if you don't really worry about it if you don't care <laughs> and you just put it out there and, you know, let the people judge and come to their own conclusions, then cool. That's the beauty. It's just another day, right? <laughs> the, beauty, mean, the beauty yeah. of age, right? You don't it give is. a shit you about don't it. Care. You don't give a flying fig. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I'll post that. Uh, um, that's good. And if people dig it, they dig it. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. You know, why worry about it? Exactly. You know, tomorrow's another day. Well, Paul. Thanks for coming on the channel. Oh, it's been my pleasure. It, totally really, my thanks pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. What you need to do now is click right up here and you can watch Paul interview me over on his channel and you can subscribe over there. And I recommend you watch his stuff. He's very entertaining. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>